I studied law in school. I got called to the bar, so I was like, you know what, let me just try to be do this lawyer thing. You feel me? Like, so I was a lawyer for a few years of my life, and I realized that there was a part of myself that was empty. I felt like I wasn't achieving as much as I could. So at that point, music was what was able to help me go through that time. And then I realized if music is helping me go through this period of time, why am I not really actually making music? You feel me? So I was a studio rap when I started. Most of the time I'm in the studio when my mates are in lecture rooms and taking tests. I'm in the studio with other engineers or producers that were better than me at that, at that time, learning you know, skills, learning ways to do things and everything and trying to find a way to apply that to myself. And also, very great tools online, you know, Google was my friend, really, literally. Um, if I had any issues, I just go online, how do you do this? And then you, know, you have arrays of ideas and techniques on how to, you know, um, tackle those issues. So that was basically how I developed myself as a producer. I always tell myself that my purpose for coming to earth, I'm still figuring it out, but I know that music is the tool for me. Music is the vehicle that would help me achieve that purpose. So that's the reason why I make music. Music is deeper for me than just, I enjoy it. It's like, I feel like it's the reason why I was created. I have here with me music producer Ses Beats. Thanks for being here today. We're going to go into how the Google app helped you because you already yeah. talked about it. But before we get there, yeah. I just want to talk. You know, I don't know. Did your parents just hear for the first time that you were not <laughs> attending class and <laughs> you were making beats? I'm sorry, mom. Right right. <laughs> <laughs> but how was that, though? I mean, doing, studying law and having uh, a passion for music. Um, how tough was that for you? I feel like my case is different because I always made music right from when I was a kid. Like, I know people say this like a lot. It's kind of cliche when people say, oh, I started making music at. Literally, when I, there was a, I can remember when I was in primary school, I think primary three or something, we had a career day, and they asked, like, then they asked people, what do you want to be? People say, I want to be a lawyer, people say, I want to be a police. And they asked me, I said, I want to be Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I think I was six or seven at that time. Yeah. So that music, music had always been a part of me, I'd always wanted to Why be Why do you music. think that was? Is, is there a history in the family? Or is nah, it just nah. Nothing? It's just... <laughs> for me, I mean, I, I feel like, like I said, um, like, and I, like I always say, I feel like that was the reason why I was created, really, yeah. to make music. So at what point did you now become production instead of being an artist? Yeah, I mean, I was an artist, yeah, but yeah. Um, it was actually a business um, decision by me and my business partner, Alaji Popping. Uh, when we came into the industry, like four years ago, like, we don't have the budget to push this artist <laughs> thing. It's not really easy. You need to understand that, like, a lot of money goes into you know, the brand, shooting the videos, you know, the studio sessions, we're like, so how, why don't we just start with production? You know, build a name for ourselves, you know, liars with people, try to see how you can build a brand, then from there, see how that goes. So that was how the whole production thing started. It was supposed to just be like a means to an end. And then yeah. I just figured, wow. Really so when did people start taking you seriously? Like, who did you start working with? Because uh, I mean, there's producers everywhere. Yeah, and there's really yeah, good producers everywhere. Yeah. At what point did you? I was lucky to um, come into the industry and meet Faust. Faust was the first artist that I worked with when I entered the industry. And also, at that point, he was a hungry artist trying to make a name for himself, a lawyer also. I was an hungry producer, mm -hmm. like a hungry producer, rather, um, trying to make a name for myself also. So we just kind of clicked at that point. And then we worked on the Stories I Touch album. Yeah. And that changed our lives. Yeah. So that was it for me. That was, um, I came into the industry as, a, as an album producer. Yeah. And yeah, that was what set me apart from a lot of people. How, how I want to believe you're self-taught now. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, you mentioned the Google app there. How yeah, did the Google yeah. app sort of help this transition? I mean, yeah. you're not necessarily paying. It's, yeah. a, free, it's a free school. <laughs> so for you, real, for you real. Need, you're talking about budget, so that, that would not real. be the problem. And people need to understand, man, everything is on Google. Like, for real, all you have to do is just search, man. Like, information, the information is right there. And at that point, because I was trying to go to law school, um, I was trying to make my lectures at the same time, I was trying to make music. I didn't really have the time to, you know, get like a formal musical education, like go to a music school or something. So mm -hmm. I had to find a way to, you know, keep myself motivated 
find a way to keep working, find a way to, you know, get myself better, you know. So um, I had to dig deep. I had to find a tool, you know, and I feel like that's the importance of technology really is finding a system to better yourself, to yeah. be more efficient. And I felt like the best way to do that was information, you know, the internet. Yeah. So I had to invest really, and that's the thing for people in the music industry to understand, you have to invest. At that point, I was subscribing to a lot of um, website blogs, you know, sometimes I have to pay like 10, $15 per month to be able to get some information, get some plugins, um, get some tutorials and everything. And that was how I really developed myself. Yeah. You know, like that was, that was basically and, uh, People always come to me and ask, oh, how, 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 how do I become a good presenter? You know, and I tell them it's, it's very sim it's actually as simple as going on the Google app and For searching real. something as basic as how to how conduct a good TV interview. Simple. There's really no hard and fast way to it. Simple. Is it that simple as well with music production? Nah, like what do you nah. search for? <laughs> what um, kind of things do you look out for? That's as actually a, a really producer? good question because like, um, there's so much information. That's the thing. Like, and that's I feel like that's the 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 opposite side of of the internet. Like, I don't want to say the the disadvantage of it. The opposite side of it is because there's just so much information. So you have to be able to filter. So to be able to filter, and and I think, and I feel like this would be very good for upcoming producers to know now is only search for things that you need. Like, think to yourself, what do I need to know right now? What am I trying to achieve with my sound? What are the tools that I need? What can help me achieve it? And then just search for that. So don't go out just how to be a good producer. Yes. Nah, that is so ambiguous. You have to be specific. Like if you're having a problem with maybe your compression or you're having a problem with your EQ, these are producer terms. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, yeah trying to show us more. You feel me? <laughs> so like you just, you just have to be specific and be like, oh, I'm having this problem with my mix. How do I get it done? And once you can do that, you know, you build the knowledge from there and um, it's, it's, it's a step-by-step -step thing. You can't just learn everything once. You need yeah. to, you know, pace yourself and, um, you know, not every day thing. I've been doing this for 10 years. It's not yeah. a joking stuff. That's good. I mean, I mean and you've, you've gone on to be very good at it. And you, you did Appreciate the soundtrack it, for man. King of Boys, did you? King of Boys, Which though. was a humongous movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 how, did yeah. You, how did you get that? Um, <laughs> coincidentally, though, um, that song, I'm going to tell the story. That song was made for Files, for the 27 album. So I did the beat. I definitely came to the studio. Um, he did his, the chorus, killed it. So I gave it to Fowl. So yeah, do your verse now. Two days, three days, four days, nothing. He just called me and says, I'm not a gangster, okay? Because the name of the song is original gangsters. Like, I don't know how to put myself to, that place. to that place right to the song. I was like, cool. So you're going to give me the song. I know who to call. So I called Reminis. And I was like, I mean, Reminis is the embodiment of like, he's a G. You feel me? So I was like, all right, what's up? Baba, I need you to help me out. So he, he, was, he, was, he was good with it. Gave me my verse in a few days. And we had the song, and that was meant for my album. Coincidentally, um, Kemi was working with Reminis on King of Boys. So it just clicked. I just told him, ah, why don't you pitch this song to Kemi and see if it works for the movie. And since you're in the movie, see how it works. And then she heard it, and she just fell in love with it. Like, yeah. wow, I really, really love the song. I really want to um, use it as a soundtrack. I was like, yeah. let's do it. And you, did, you worked on Chief Daddy as well, I believe. Yeah, the Famsi Anthem. Yeah, yeah. Nani, nani would love me last year. You feel me? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. major. I mean, yeah. are you ever going back to being an artist? I am a an artist. Full on, a full on. As a matter of fact, you be you. Will you be primarily a producer always? Nah, my 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 next my uh, new single as an artist is coming out in in a couple of months. I'm very excited about it. that's a new chapter for me. I feel oh, nice. like um, last year I dropped an album called Omomuda, and yeah. the purpose for that album for me was to seal that producer. Um, aspect of myself. It was a statement for myself to say I've done so much for myself. All the relationships that I've been able to build as a producer. You know, I was able to work with a lot of people, Nino La Files. No, yeah. Files was not on the album. Funny enough, my major guy I didn't put him on the album. <laughs> Suck it. So we're looking forward to your album <laughs> yeah, basically. So, to your so, new, the new body of work. So I'm excited about what's coming man. Yeah. Um, my, my song as an artist pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one man. Thank you Good so much man, for with everything. Show, no matter what career of business you want to excel in Google can help you feel your hustle. I think that's the message we're passing. Real, but I have a very important it. message. Uh, please join Google for a hands-on empowerment masterclass to learn how to improve your skills, business, and envision the future. Speakers will include Larry Olushala, Julieta Himwan, who's the country director for Google, and Abiso Yakin who's the 2018 SCNN hero. The first one is in Lagos on the 12th of June at 9 a.m. Uh, the location is the Podium Event Center in Ikeja. Please uh, use the hashtag for your hustle and you know tweet at us, and we'll find you, find you, and find out how to get you there please make sure you and also go to uh, bit.ly forward slash feel your hustle
to be a part of this. Thanks a lot for joining us and I'll see you next Sunday.